So episode 4 of series 10 of Doctor Who, which was called Knock Knock, has just finished on BBC One and it's absolutely thrown me, I'm not, I'm not sure about it. Got a different setup for this week, just trying something different until I get um, the Cyberman background. But let's talk about it, there's a lot of stuff I liked, a lot of stuff that I didn't like. And like I said, it's really thrown me, so let's get straight so into it. So what I really liked about this episode was Bill for about the first 5 or 10 minutes, pretty much the introduction of the episode. And maybe about five minutes when the Doctor arrived at the house and in the TARDIS. I really liked her character in that it's shown that she's developed a lot since the first episode. If we'd have seen Bill from the first episode moving into the house then, she wouldn't have cared about anything and she'd have been in the same mode like Laffy Daffy sort of like, you know. She'd have been episode one Bill where she didn't really notice anything and wasn't bothered. But I liked that now after all them travels that she's had in episode one with the puddle and going to the Dalek planet and then with, with um, Smile and then London last week. She's definitely learned a few things and I like that. As I've said previously, we haven't got Bill for very long. She's going to be gone before we know it. In around about a month and a half, Bill will be gone, which is upsetting. But I like that they're not rushing it, but they're going at a pretty good pace where we're getting to understand Bill without feeling like, oh, we're getting all this stuff. But every week we are learning something new about her and she's also learning something new about the Doctor. We forget she didn't know that he was a Time Lord until this week and I just think they're going at a good pace with um, explaining her character. So I really liked Bill at the start of the episode when they get to the house after searching and through like, them funny scenes. They get to the house and she's wary about it. She's not sure. But then it sort of gets brushed over and then she starts to I wouldn't say be aggressive to the Doctor, but she definitely sides with her friends more, that she doesn't know. She doesn't know these people at all, yet she wants, I guess she, yeah, she wants to impress them and she wants to make more friends, which is fine. But this guy's just shown her the universe and she's sort of siding with absolute strangers that could turn out to be nutters. She even says so herself that she doesn't feel comfortable with them. Two guys started hitting on her within an hour of being in the house, and yet she likes to side with them. I'm gonna let this one slide because yeah, she really wants to make friends and I guess she really, really wanted to make friends but she's got the Doctor who can show her anything in the universe so I think that was a bit of a foolish, silly thing for Bill to do. Um, so like I said, I really liked Bill at the start but then it sort of went down but then towards the end of the episode I like that she pointed out a problem that the Doctor had made with solving the problem. Don't get me started on that, I really want to go into a rant about the ending of the episode but I don't think I should. Um, not just yet anyway, I think I should sit on it for a few days and digest it and see what I think uh, later on because it's literally been five minutes since the episode ended. So enough about Bill. Bill was good this week, apart from the foolish choice that she made. Uh, the next thing was that uh, DoctorWho.tv and a few other companies uh, were reporting that the do uh, Ian and Barbara's grandson, grandson from uh, the 60s, he was just, like the first ever human companions to travel with the first Doctor all them um, years ago. Apparently their grandson was in this episode, but they never specified which one it was. They showed a picture online of which one it was. It was the one who was working with the Doctor for a lot of the episode. And I swear he picked up the picture of Ian, which was the first male companion in Doctor Who. I swear he picked it up and then he dropped it again. And if it was his grandfather, he'd have noticed that picture. So I don't know if this rumour was true or if it was false. It never got mentioned. And I think if it was true, they would have definitely have mentioned it at some point in the episode or at least hinted to it. But it didn't seem to happen at all. So that was that. That was, again, that was something like, eh. So we've got Bill making this choice, which is eh. And then we've got this problem here that was bugging me throughout the episode. If people didn't know about that at all, then I guess they saw the episode in a different light. If they didn't know he was the grandchild at all, or knew about that rumour at all, they would have seen this episode in another light. So now the caretaker sort of guy. I like that we had the Doctor as a caretaker in Series 8, and now we've got this guy as a caretaker. It's definitely... Um, caretaker versus caretaker vibe which was I was getting if you remember the caretaker episode when he was working at Coal Hill back when Clara was alive um, but yeah this guy I liked him um, until towards the end when he got all soppy I like that the twist spoilers if you haven't seen it. I don't know why you're watching this if you haven't seen the episode unless you're just curious um, I thought and as the viewers thought that he was treating his mother, no it was his daughter, he was treating his daughter but then the twist is that it's actually his mother and he's gotten so old by treating her and stuff. And the big problem with this episode which I don't, it just shows that they must have been writing in a rush, is at the end of the episode when it all happens and they hug each other and the daughter, the mother, the mother dies and this, the guy dies, the old man, I don't know his name, he was the caretaker of the house, when them two die she restores Bill's friends that she's just made, but in the episode it clearly states that there's been people there for years and years, so 
why would you just return them six? Aren't you gonna, if the house is giving back everyone it's been eaten, why are you giving back them six? Aren't you gonna give back the rest of them? What happened? So I think that was a plot hole that they just absolutely forgot. Oh yeah, there are other people. Unless they did and they ran away or whatever, or they got crushed by the house falling. Again, it was, ugh. Another thing was that, why were the bugs in the garden? Uh, we get that the child found them in the garden, just playing there, and he took them to his mother and showed them, and that's how she became it. They explained it perfectly, how she got into a situation. She was ill, she was dying. These bugs could help her, uh, these like wood lice sort of things. And they, Stephen Moffat said they were wood lice. They weren't wood lice at all. They looked similar, but they're not wood lice. And uh, they're something very similar, but from, from space. Or were they from space? It wasn't explained. We're guessing they're from space. Like last week, was that sea creature from space? That's the problem with series 10. I don't like how it's not explaining a lot of things. Stephen Moffat says he doesn't like to explain everything because he feels like he'd be spoon feeding the Doctor Who audience and he believes that the Doctor Who audience are very smart. And they are very smart because they pointed out problems like this. I just feel like there are things you do need to tell us and there's things that we can work out for ourselves. But apart from that, that was the only problem I had with the episode. Uh, there was all the ranty bits. Apart from that, I really like the theme of it. I like the lightning uh, outside the thunderstorm. I liked how they brought into play the the freshers fair at the end when they opened the window. The fireworks were there. I was like, why would there random bit fireworks? But Bill states that it is the freshers fair. Uh, I like the Doctor and Bill again interacting, especially in the TARDIS at the start of the episode with the postcodes. I thought that was a very funny scene and stuff like that. It definitely shows that they're great on screen together. So. I have a lot more disappointments with the episodes than I have positives. I was really looking forward to the episode and it did live up to what I was expecting. I guess I was just expecting more because I was thinking a lot of Hyde from series 7 which was with Clara and the 11th Doctor. That was my favourite time in Doctor Who series 7 part 2. I was really expecting that sort of vibe where it was horror all the way through. This definitely took a twist and I don't think they needed to. I think they could have... Definitely have had this as the uh, the mother, this wood creature. It didn't really have a name, which is something that's not so great in Doctor Who. If you don't give it a name, that's not going to go down well. Um, especially for me, anyway. I don't know about you watching. You might have a different opinion, which you're entitled to. But it definitely felt like they could have gone a different route. And I would have just loved to have seen a classic series, Doctor Who chase scene, with the Doctor running with Bill, holding hands. And this scary-ass wood creature is coming after them, and there's all the wood lice on the wall. And it's like, oh, you get surrounded, or whatever. You get to the door, and the door's healed over. It's a piece of wood, and there's no way out. I'd have loved scenes like that. I, did, I think they definitely missed a scene like that. They could have done that scene, like a chase scene with the thing coming after it, and then slowly diverted into... Sorry, there's something on my screen. Oh, we just, just knocked the camera here. Um, they could have definitely have diverted into something like that. But they didn't, so I feel like towards the end it got a bit messy and a bit scruffy. And at the end of the episode the Doctor's like, oh, well, go find another house then. And it's like, so is Bill homeless now? Is she going to be staying in the TARDIS for a bit until she finds another house? We saw at the start of the episode how hard it is to find a house. So where's, what's Bill's living arrangements now? Clara lived in the TARDIS, Amy lived in the TARDIS. A lot of companions have lived in the TARDIS. Will she now live in the TARDIS? Um... So that was that. There are definitely a few problems, but um, I, I liked it. I can still go back and watch it and enjoy it. It's just a few things. But I guess you will always have a few problems with Doctor Who episodes, unless they're absolutely good. I don't know if it's just that I'm waiting out for the Cybermen, because I know the Mondas Cybermen, Cybermen are coming back. And it's one of my all-time favourite episodes of Doctor Who from the classics. It means a lot to me. So I don't know if it's just waiting for that. I don't know if it's also the fact that they announced Peter Capaldi's leaving, and it's just weighing on me that it's like... We're getting closer to the end, so I feel like they shouldn't have done that. I don't think it would have leaked at all that they were casting a new Doctor, like as they are right now. I don't think they needed to do it. I know about the Cyberman filming on the streets and stuff. I guess why I get why they needed to announce that. But I feel like they've announced too much. Like I'm looking forward to more stuff towards the end of the series, which is bad. Because that's when Peter Capal is almost done as being the Doctor. So it's almost like I'm looking forward to his ending, which I'm really not. I'm really looking forward to next week's episode again, but I just know when I start watching it, I won't be as excited as I will be throughout the week waiting for it, because I just know it's one week closer to uh, the big stuff, the crazy stuff. Episode 6, though, we're going to find out what's behind the door. That was, again, like I said last week, it's really bad when my favourite part of the episode is the doors. Again, it was with Nardo. I like how they're not suffocating us with Nardo like it seems on the posters. You had him on the posters, yeah, he's hardly in it, so was he really needed for the promotional? He's on the DVDs as well for series 10. Is he really needed there if he's really not in it that much? He's going to be in it all next week, I believe, and he'll be an extremist. And pretty much here on now, Nardo is going to be in everything pretty much heavy. 
So I take back what I just said. They haven't been suffocating with us because they're about to suffocate us with um, Nardole. He's going to be in everything. He's going to be everywhere. And I feel like he's really going to start to get annoying as it goes on. I, I don't know. We'll just have to wait and see. Yes, it was a good episode. I had problems with it. I'm looking forward to what's coming up. Definitely isn't the Cybermen now behind the door. Uh, I really thought it was. Uh, there was a lot pointing towards it being the Cybermen. But I'm kind of happy they're not behind the door now because now I have absolutely no idea how the Cybermen are going to join the Series 10 finale. They can come out of anywhere. They could even rip out of the Void and tie it into a David Tennant story with the Daleks versus Cybermen. It could be something like that, that they've tried to leave our universe and go to a new one, and now they're ripping back. Because they've been gone for a long time, they're going to have to explain why haven't we seen our version of the Cybermen. This is going to have to be a whole new video. I'm starting to ramble now. But why haven't we seen our version of the Cybermen ever in Doctor Who since it's come back in 2005? Every Cyberman we've seen was from the Parallel universe when David Tennant went there. All them Cybermen followed the Doctor back to our universe and that's how we have them now. We've never seen our Cybermen so I'm sure they'll explain it. I feel like they did try and leave our universe and go somewhere else and try and begin again. But that'll be for a video another time. I always say that I'm going to make the door video about what's behind it, but I always feel like there's not enough information there. But now I feel like there might actually be enough. It's definitely pointing to be someone we all know, but maybe we're not all like. So I'm, I'm worried for episode six now. I'm excited to see who it is, but if it's who I think it is, that's not going to go down well with the fans at all. No one will want to see this person, but I will definitely make a video. I keep promising it and I keep delaying it just because I don't feel like we have enough news for it. But I think this week I will definitely make something at least about how the Cybermen can come back or who's behind the door. It'll be one or the other and there'll also be a review. So thank you for watching. I seem to do all right this week. I think, it, like I said, it's getting better every week. Bit by bit, we're getting there. So thank you for watching. If you like this video, hit that like button. Subscribe if you want to see another video. If you hit the like button, then it lets me know that you want to see the videos with the Cybermen, how I think they came back um, to our world in the finale, and why there's all these Cybermen, and if there will be a multi-master story, how John Sim's coming back. So yeah, if you hit that like button, it lets me know that you actually want to see some of these other videos that I have in mind. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys.